Thank you for joining us. In this video, we're highlighting the major differences that exist during this COVID pandemic. As you know, intubation is an aerosol generating medical procedure and requires contact airborne PPE. Take some time to familiarize yourself with proper contact airborne donning and doffing techniques. We're distributing this video widely, understanding that the healthcare workers responsible for intubation are the most affected by this. This is to familiarize all healthcare workers with the modifications in a COVID intubation. In preparation for the intubation of the COVID positive patient, it is important to identify that the goal is to limit the number of healthcare workers exposed during aerosol generating medical procedures and to preserve PPE. We will need to identify the personnel that will be entering the room. All of these are wearing airborne PPE. These include the intubator, the airway assistant, the medications, hemodynamics and equipment assistant. These people are inside the room. Outside of the room, there will be a runner in droplet PPE, also another runner, and a PPE monitor. In terms of equipment, the assembled team will go through the equipment checklist in order to ensure all necessary supplies are available. This is done in an attempt to minimize opening of the door once the procedure has begun. The medication administrator will ensure proper IV access and readiness of the medications, and a rapid sequence induction kit is available in the Omnicell. All items entering the patient room are considered contaminated and should not be reused. At this time, the team has assembled inside the room and is huddling to discuss the plans for intubation. Plan A is video laryngoscopy. Plan B is direct laryngoscopy with or without the use of a bougie as appropriate. Rescue oxygenation will happen with a supraglottic airway device. In this scenario, after adequate two-handed bag valve mouth pre-oxygenation, the team is planning to intubate. With the patient breathing spontaneously and after reaching maximum oxygen saturation achievable, the medications for a rapid sequence induction will be administered. We wait adequate time for full paralysis. Once 45 to 60 seconds have elapsed, the first attempt with video laryngoscopy and rigid stylet will happen. early endotracheal tube cuff inflation and attachment of the viral filter. In this scenario, you will notice that we did not auscultate and we're placing the patient on the ventilator with lung protective ventilation. At this time, all contaminated items need to be disposed of appropriately, including putting all reusable items in a biohazard bag. The glide scope will need to be wiped down and the team will then perform doffing safely and a debrief. In the event that the ventilator is not readily available, we will confirm endotracheal tube placement with calorimetric entitled CO2. This will be attached and then the patient bagged. In the scenario where video laryngoscopy does not lead to successful intubation, we will switch immediately to direct laryngoscopy. If direct laryngoscopy is not successful, the patient will likely have desatted. It is important to resist the urge to bag mass ventilate for your own safety. You will insert a laryngeal mask airway with the laryngeal mask airway in place it is safe to then perform behind a viral filter gentle bag mass ventilation with small tidal volumes and the fewest amounts of breath to maintain oxygenation. At this point, you should call for additional assistance. In the unlikely event that oxygenation isn't possible with the LMA, gentle bag mass ventilation with small tidal volumes and fewest breath is acceptable until assistance from another provider has arrived. 
in this scenario, the patient is being bagged. Now the ventilator has arrived. Before any disconnection of the components of the circuit, it is imperative that the endotracheal tube be clamped in order to prevent aerosolization.